Welcome to Chandwell. For the last three weeks I've been working on this wide arch that's going to go over a road coming down from Chandwell High Street. It's the next arch in the series along the viaduct and it goes next to the workshops that I did in the video last time. This is a skew arch which means that the road passes at an oblique angle under the tracks. Please watch this rather long video to see how I made it. So now that my arches are all complete and, and looking good I'm going to steal a couple of weeks early start on this part of the viaduct. This is a wide arch. It's based upon an arch very similar to this style in Dewsbury in the north of England. Um, I might put, if I can, a picture of that up there for you to have a look at. What I want here is not just a straightforward arch that goes straight across the tracks at 90 degrees. I want it to be a skew arch which is going to go across at an angle more like this so the road will go across the tracks at this kind of angle. So to that end I'm going to build this with a fat bit at one side and a thin bit at the other. This will then have a, a matching side that way around so the fat bit will be at this side and the thin bit at that side. The theory is then the arch will go across there like that. The structure of it should be fairly straightforward to do but the way that the brickwork works on skew arches like this is really interesting. You've probably seen it, it comes down at kind of an angle. Um, it's straight in the middle and at an angle on the edge. I've got an idea how I'm going to do that. But what I'm going to do first though is get the structure of the bridge itself to fit under here. And then we can glue those textures on top of that. So it's over to the computer now to do some designing and then we'll print it out and see where we get to. So I've designed the main output outline of the bridge and it should be coming out of the printer around about now. Here we go. Just need to get this stuck to some card and then start putting it together. Hopefully it will slide under here quite nicely. Okay, here we are. All the templates printed onto one millimeter card, all stuck down and ready to be cut. We've got the faces of the arch, we've got the middle of the arch, this will just give an extra surface to stick the, the brickwork to. We've got three pieces which I'm just using to keep it straight. Um, there's not much space at the top of these arches because I've had to cut them quite low to fit under the track. So these will hopefully just give it some rigidity and keep it straight. We've got the outer edge pieces and the inner edge pieces. These ones are about four millimetres longer than these ones um, because they will be the interior that go along the, 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 the skewed arch. So obviously it's a little bit longer than the outer. So hopefully that will make sense once you see me start to cut it out and stick it together. But for now, let's get going and cut these out. So here we are, a kit of parts to make the wide arched bridge in the viaduct. We've got the three arches in their positions in the skew, which we've talked about. We've got the four edge pieces, and we've got the three pieces which hopefully will keep <laughs> these three pieces nice and straight. They are very bendy because that is only a couple a couple of millimetres tall, that, um, that bit there. So, once that's, on, once that's on, hopefully it'll stop bending. So we'll stick them together and see how we get on. So I've glued all the bits together and we now have the outline of a bridge. You can see the three arches in the uprights. I forgot of course when I made the pattern for this that I needed to have a gap in the middle for the arch. So. That was hacked together a little bit, but um, quite pleased with how it looks. It's quite sturdy. Um, I've tested it and it fits under the layout in exactly the right place. It's a tight fit, I need two hands to get it under there. Um, and there's a bit of wire as well, um, which I've had to cut a notch out for. But it works. So, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to place just a piece of white paper 
in here to give the, the shape of the arch and then I will print bricks out and paste that on top. The reason I'm doing that is I think that these ribs will show through on the first layer so I'm going to put a layer of paper down just to um, act as a base for it. So let's do that. So here we are, I've stuck a layer of paper onto the arch. I'm holding it down with tins because I want it to dry absolutely flat and I think that's where most of the strength will go into the bridge. So we'll see how it goes. I'll come back in an hour or so and see how it looks. So here's the bridge now then, with its arch in place. It's starting to look good. It's got that nice skew angle that I was after. And the, the arch interior looks quite good. So what I've got now is I've got a square, a sheet of scale scenes brown brick, um, which considering this is engaged, the quality is absolutely fantastic, which I need to place on top of this. Now, as far as I can tell, the reason a skew arch looks the way it does is that the brick course has to be parallel to the outer but buttresses. So the brick course needs to be exactly this way, which gives it that kind of like twisted look. So what my plan is, I'm going to get this in place like that and just stick it down parallel to the buttresses. So let's see how it goes and see if it gets the effect that I'm after. So that's it, that's the brick course in place. You can see that it's gone in a, a twisted angle, which is what causes the skewed arch brickwork to look as it does on the real thing. And if you look up above, the bricks are in parallel with the buttresses, which is what gives the arch its strength in real life, I believe. So we'll let the glue dry, we'll trim off the overhangs, and then we'll see if it's had the effect that I wanted. I have gone a little bit under here, but that won't matter because this is going to have the, the stone on top of uh, the, the same style as the viaduct itself. And um, the bricks are just going to be for the interior of the arch. So check back in an hour or two and we'll see how it looks. And that I am very pleased with. The course of those bricks is fantastic. Exactly what I wanted. Okay, time to do the front and back. So the arch is starting to look fantastic in, loca in its location. It matches the rest of the viaduct quite nicely. So now we need to get rid of these rough edges. We've got the inner edge of the arch which has got exposed card. We've got a big gap here and we've got the tops of the inner parts kind of here which all need some care and attention. So to that end I've got three pieces which I'm going to do now. We have got the scale scenes coins I think they're called coins, which will go on the side of here. We've got these pieces, which I've wrapped around some cereal card. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut 
about a millimeter width of this all the way along. It's going to be very fiddly, but my plan is that that will go across the top of the wall inside to make, give it a bit of a ledge. And then these, I'm going to cut into individual pieces, well, on one half, and then wrap it around the inside of the arch and bring it out over the front. So I'm going to do that now, one at a time. Um, I think I'll start with the with the arch. First, what, what I do first is I colour the edges with a pen, a felt pen, just to take away the white edge. And then we'll cut it and stick it and see how it works. So that's a big improvement. It looks really good. It's nice and neat on the outside. There's no white lines showing. It looks all right on the inside as well. Maybe not fully stuck down there. It does look fully stuck down, just doesn't on the camera. Um, so that's all right. I've got some glue um, onto the brickwork itself, so it's shining out a little bit, but that always disappears once I get the varnish on, so I'm not too worried about that. So next then, I'm going to do the coins, or whatever they're called, on the edge there and there. And it'll be a very similar technique. The important thing for all of this is pre-folding. Um, so I score on the reverse, um, just using a porky stick thing. I score on the reverse and fold to start with, that way the edges are nice and straight and you don't have to um, fiddle on too much. So the most fiddly part of these things are getting the white edges coloured in with the felt pen. So do that first, cut it to the right height and then put it round and see how that looks. So we have the edge pieces in place, starting to look good. Now we just need the interior of this doing. And what I intend to do is I intend to put it all the way along the inside and then leave it here for now. And then once I've got once it's on the layout and I've got the buttresses in place, I'll bring another little bit of it across just to finish off this scruffy top bit here. Um, but I think um, that would be it. There we are. The main part of the bridge is finished. I think it looks great, particularly those bricks. When you consider that this is engaged and those bricks are absolutely fractions of a millimetre, it looks amazing. So what we'll do now is we will We'll varnish the interior of the arch because I'm not going to be able to varnish it once it's in place. So I'll give the whole thing one coat and then I'll finish off the arch itself inside with two more coat, coats. And then once that's done we can stick the bridge down, um, work on the buttresses. Obviously we've got something to put in here, um, a buttress up here. There's going to be two buttresses on this side, one here and one here and then we put the top on so the top is essentially a ledge and a wall along the top so it'll come all the way along to here i think it's going to look absolutely fantastic it's exactly what i was expecting or exactly what i was aiming for and it looks good you can see a little bit of the ridge on the inside um, of this bit of the arch here certainly on the camera but when you actually look in um, it's, it's not that noticeable so i'm not too worried about that um, 
I think it's going to be good. So we'll do the varnishing once the glue's dried. We'll give it a few hours. Um, there's nothing much else we can do for a few days. But it's looking good. And I'm pleased with it. Here's a quick look at the brick courses. You can see that it's parallel or perpendicular to the arches themselves and um, parallel to the buttresses. Um, and that's what gives it its nice skew shape. So the time has come to actually put the bridge in place, but there's two or three issues with this. If we slot it in, you'll see what the first one is. It's quite a tight fit, but it does go in eventually. Now, when I originally designed the viaduct, I was going to have the wiring and the point motor rods hidden behind the buttresses and the um, piers, but I didn't want to compromise the actual look of the viaduct itself. So if we look at this bit of piano wire going down through the point um, tie bar here, um, once I eventually get it in, it's a little bit awkward, <laughs> um, you'll see that it goes down, but it actually hits the top of the arch of the bridge, which isn't ideal. So what we need to do is I plan to drill a small hole in the top of the arch um, somewhere towards the left there where that big hole is down there. I'm just going to have the one millimeter piano wire sticking up through there. It will detract a little bit from the overall look, but I don't think it'll matter too much. Um, certainly from normal viewing angles, you won't really notice it. Um, I might not even ever get around to putting working point motors in. So that's the plan. The next issue is working out exactly what angle to have the bridge at. Um, if I have it too too much one way or too much the other, it will ruin the overall look of the curve of the viaduct. So I'm thinking something like this. So here we go. 1.2 millimeter piano wire. And if you wiggle it underneath, the points are working. So we should be okay with that. So obviously it's not ideal. But what we've got with the bridge in place is we've got the wire coming up like this. Now once obviously that's covered with a road and a pavement and various other things in there, it's going to be quite dark in there. Um, from normal viewing angle, which is here, you can't actually see it at all. So I think it's really minor that that is there like that. So I'm quite happy and now I think it's time to glue the bridge down and start finishing it off. So I've added the buttresses and the bit on the right hand side to join it to the rest of the viaduct and I think it's starting to look good. Um, over on this side, because of the way the angles worked, I've had to make a bit of a, a fudge, if you like, a bit of an L-shaped buttress there. So I'm going to make that look like a large buttress that sticks out a little bit further um, than the other ones. So I've done the same to match that up on that side. So that's a, a four millimeter thick, so a two foot buttress at that end of the bridge. I think it'll look okay. Um, I've got a little bit of this capping um, left over from when I did the arches, um, and that looks okay when it's on there, or it will do. I think it really starts to, to finish it off. Um, but what I want to do with these big buttresses, I want them to, to come up further um, above the the ledge. So it needs to have like a kind of a, a, a shelf on, similar to the ones that I did over here. So something similar to, 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 to this um, here um, and, and here. So I'm going to make some, some of these caps. Put those on first. Um, so we'll have um, we'll have a cap here and a cap here. This will let us put a little bit of the ledge going this way into the square cap. Then we'll have the ledge across there, a square cap. No, ledge all the way onto there, and then a square cap. So we'll try that, um, and then we'll see how it looks. So I've put the first cappings on, and the ledge. Um, it looks a little bit scruffy at this edge, but once the wall goes across, you won't see any of that. Um, it's coming along. It looks more finished off than it was before. Um, I've also used a little bit of the strip that I put on the inside of the top wall. If we can see it, get the focus right. So I put a bit more of that strip just along here and along here and in there, just to finish off that wall and make it look as though it was all 
part of the same building and I think that makes a, a really big difference. I think it looks really good. Um, so I've put that on and I've also put the, the inner ledge cap um, along, along here. Um, so it's starting now to really blend in with the, with the rest of the viaduct. So I just need to get the wall on the top now um, and then the equivalent um, buttresses and things on the other side. Um, and we're very, very nearly finished. So looking good. So for the buttress tops, I have um, all the bits cut out. I've got two one millimeter pieces, eight two millimeter pieces. Now I'm not sure whether I'm gonna put these in, in blocks of three to make it six, millimeter, uh, six millimeters thick or four to make it eight. I'll see how it looks once I've glued the first three together. Um, and then I've got the covers. So I've, I've cut out a couple of pieces of the dark random ashlar and a couple of pieces of the sills area that goes um, on the same sheet as that. Um, these will wrap around these and then these will wrap around these. So let's start gluing them together and seeing how it works. So these are the two buttress tops that are going to go on top of the bridge. They're almost ready. Um, they're quite thick. Um, I made a mistake in that I didn't cut the um, covering paper wide enough. So this is going to be facing away from the front of the layout. So I will have to put some kind of patch on there um, at some point. I might do it before I stick them on or I might do it after. You'll also notice that whenever I do those tops, there's always a little bit of paper shining through. So there's a little bit of white in that corner there. Um, I use a quite fairly simple technique to, to solve that problem. And I just have some markers in a similar kind of colour. This one's a Letraset Pro Marker Cool Grey 4. It doesn't have to match exactly, but generally I just, um, just dab it on. Um, I'll see if I can do it while holding my camera. Um, I'll just dab it on a little bit, kind of like just like that. And it's just enough to take that white edge away. So I do that with all of the buildings. Um, that I make. Just the slightest of dabs. The colour doesn't have to match exactly, but it's just enough to take that um, shine of white away. So here they are in place on top of the fat buttresses. So this one in this corner, which was quite scruffy when I first did it, is actually going to look good um, once the wall's in place. So I've got a little bit of wall to put in this gap and then a wall to put across here. And once that's done, it's finished. Well, the front is finished anyway. Then I have to do the back. But I think it's going to work out as planned. And it's back out with the tins. We are done. The wall is in place. The buttresses on either side are in place. You can't really see them. The reason I'm using the tins is I've taken a bit of a shortcut with the um, wall behind in that I've just stuck it directly on top of um, the the ledge which is kind of like hanging out over the over the track a little bit so it seems to be all right um, it's just it wasn't staying straight so the theory is the rulers on top and um, with a little bit of weight down are just holding them upright and in parallel whilst the glue dries. Um, other than that, I'm more or less done. Um, the bit of wall under here that fits against the existing bit of wall above the blue arch has a bit of a gap in. Uh, I think you might be able to see it if I zoom in. Uh, so there's a bit of a gap there. Um, so what I'm going to do is once that glue's set, I will do similar to what I've done on the main wall which is just a patch over it with a little bit of patch um, and if you look closely it shows you how good the patching is because I can't actually see it um, it's there so there's a patch there 
you can just see where I cut out the individual bricks um, just to put it over. So I'll just basically put it on and fold it around. Um, so that's that's the patch. So I'll do a patch over there. Um, and then I think my wide skew arch bridge is done. So that's it. I've taken the tins away and the rulers away and I think it looks exactly like I was looking for. Now I've added a little patch there so the gap has been taken away. Um, it looks slightly lighter than the bricks to the right and um, that's because I haven't put the varnish on yet. Um, I usually take about four coats which takes four days uh, 24 hours between each coat. So all I need to do now is I've got a couple of trains set up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to record the introductory part of the video. Um, hopefully everything works. I've got everything set on the control panel. I've got my two controllers over here. So all I need to do now is set it up, record the intro, and then I can edit this video and get it onto YouTube. That's it. It's the wide arch skew bridge. Exactly like I was looking for. I think it looks brilliant. Looking forward to doing the rest of the viaduct now here on Chandwell.